Hey everyone, I'm gonna call the uh, public hearing to order. And before we begin, I would like to ask our uh, town manager to uh, please uh, read the disclaimer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a reminder to all residents and participants that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the town website as part of the public record. This meeting is being held as an opportunity for public comment on the proposed legislation banning the use of gas powered leaf blowers effective January 2022, which was introduced by Council Member Steve Serco at the December 2020 Council meeting and reintroduced at the January 2021 Council meeting. We ask that audience members please hold your questions until you've been called on and to use the raise hand feature if you would like to speak. Before making your comments, please state your name and the street that you live on for records keeping purposes. We ask that you please limit your comments to two minutes per person. If this meeting gets interrupted, we will immediately end the call and send out new instructions on a new meeting via email. And we will now start the meeting. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Town Manager. So uh, before we begin, I, I do want to um, let everyone know how we're gonna proceed tonight. Uh, first, we are going to get a brief synopsis of the proposed code amendment from Council Member Steve Serco, who introduced it, followed by a staff report uh, from our town manager. Then I will call on uh, each council member in, if they have questions of uh, the uh, council member Serco regarding his legislation. And that's also an opportunity to make comments. Then uh, as the uh, town manager mentioned, uh, he will call on residents or guests to uh, present testimony. And uh, there will be a, a bell after, we'll take it to light, but there will be a bell after two minutes. And after which there, that, then if any council member wants, wants to ask a question of the uh, person making the testimony, that is fine using the raised hand feature, and then we will move to the next. And I do wanna remind everyone that it is a proposed plan that this legislation will be considered at the next council meeting in February. And at that time, there will be also opportunity, there will be further opportunity for uh, public comment. And uh, there's also an opportunity, of course, to comment on it between now and that and that um, uh, at, and the town meeting by the uh, by email or by a telephone call to the town hall, whatever you would like, and uh, and then I also want to say that uh, if anyone has uh, legal questions, they will be presented to the town attorney, and we will uh, get the information back before the uh, next council meeting. In the meantime, council, some council members have submitted questions that I think are gonna be answered by the town manager tonight by way of the, from, from the town attorney. So with that, I will turn it over to council member Serco to briefly present his code amendment. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I I think that the, the Towns Environment Committee and, uh, and I have presented uh, compelling information about the health hazards associated with gas powered leaf blowers. So I'm not gonna repeat that here, although I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that either other council members or uh, town residents may have in that regard. So I'd like to zero in on the proposed legislation, which is really very straightforward and simple. We're looking at um, section 140-3, Lawn Maintenance Activities of the Current Town Code. And this proposed regulation would add one line to the existing town code. Subparagraph C, notwithstanding any provisions to the contrary in this chapter, it shall be unlawful for any person to engage in the use of a gas-powered blower on or after January 1, 2022. We're just using the 
existing compliance mechanisms within the town code, making no changes there. That's, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Mr. Town Manager, will you please give your report on the proposed legislation, including the impact? Sure. Uh, so, uh, I've broken this down into a couple of different pieces for folks. So the first is the pilot program uh, on November 17th, uh, just as a refresher for folks, Somerset received its order of battery powered leaf blowers, which was recommended by the town's environment committee. And the total cost for the leaf blowers, the extra batteries and the chargers was uh, $2,419.93. And since that time, the town maintenance staff has used the leaf blowers for various projects and reported that the leaf blowers are most effective on hard surfaces and small surface areas. They did report that there were two issues relating to the, the battery powered leaf blowers. The first being the blower strength uh, in comparison to similar voltage and decibel uh, gas blowers, the town foreman reported that the gas blowers are stronger and more effective on large areas such as the town green spaces. Um, and then the second is the battery charge length. So when used at full strength, which it was reported is necessary for, for virtually all the jobs that they, they do, the battery powered blowers last approximately 27 minutes. So Enrique, who is our town foreman, Enrique Cabrera, estimated it took roughly an hour to clear the tennis courts during heavy leaf dropping season. So that requires switching out the batteries two times to complete the job. Uh, charging the batteries is relatively quick. It only takes about a half hour, 40 minutes to fully charge the battery. But the constant shuffling of the batteries does make it tricky to complete leaf collection activities that the maintenance staff has traditionally completed as part of its regular work schedule. Um, the, the following, I, I have sort of a cost comparison of the 65 decibel battery powered blowers compared to an equivalent gas powered blower that's 65 decibels. Um, the initial investment would be about $870 for the battery powered blowers. So that includes the blower, the charger, and an extra battery and about $260 for a gas blower. That does omit the cost of fuel, which is a little less than $200 per year per blower. So this past year, the town did receive one complaint from the Somerset House about excessive noise from leaf blowers at the pool. Staff would probably be required to rethink its leaf maintenance work and or the town may need to invest in additional batteries and chargers in order to keep them in continuous rotation. Due to heavy tree and leaf coverage, mowing alone is not seen as a viable solution for the green spaces near the, uh, near the Somerset Town Hall without uh, some of the grass dying because of not getting enough uh, sunlight coverage. Uh, in terms of enforcement, the town currently employs a town manager and a part-time contracted code enforcement officer who are responsible for enforcement of the town code and issuing citations and warnings for violations. The town's code enforcement officer is budgeted for $25,000 annually at a pay rate of $65 an hour. So that breaks down to about 387 hours in Somerset per year or just under seven and a half hours in town per week. The Somerset Code authorizes the town to issue a fine to either property owners or a contractor if a violation occurs per section 118B. Initial infractions are liable for up to a $100 fine and each fine following that can be up to $200. Somerset has informally had an administrative policy of verbally warning followed by a more official written notice of violation. And then finally, if, if the, the warnings are not heeded, issuing a civil citation as a last resort. Uh, in 2020, the town issued two 
of those more official written notices of violation and zero civil citations. Due to our limited staff capacity, I would recommend some type of reporting apparatus be looked into or established. For example, uh, a two-party reporting form that's similar to the Chevy Chase Village plans to uh, plans to plans to have as part of its violation uh, reporting for for similar legislation. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be used for both noise violations, unlawful equipment. Um, and could could be extended beyond just this legislation. I also might note that the council may want to consider guidance on what parties should be fined in the event of an infraction. As I mentioned, the, the code authorizes the town to issue a fine to either the property owner or the contractor. But I'll, I'll note that uh, our town attorney uh, said that that, that could be useful um, because in some cases it could be difficult to serve a citation. For example, if there's an out of state contractor. Uh, finally, uh, I just wanted to touch briefly on um, public comments that were received by the, the town hall. The town received nine written comments regarding the proposed legislation. Seven of those expressed a desire for the council to pass legislation as quickly as possible and without delay. One expressed support for delaying enforcement until 2022, and another more generally called for a delay in enforcing the ban. The Environment Committee Chair um, has also provided a letter, uh, an email, excuse me, that the Environment Committee received 18 letters in support of the gas powered leaf blower ban. Six of those folks who sent letters to the Environment Committee also sent copies of their support to the town hall uh, and are counted in the paragraph above that I, that I just read. In addition, the committee developed a petition that proposed banning the use of gas powered leaf blowers in Somerset, extending the ban to landscape contractors and residents, enact, enacting the ban effective January 1st, 2022 providing a $100 cash for clunker style rebate for residents who retire gas powered leaf blowers and piggybacking legislation in place in Washington DC and Chevy Chase Village. The results of the petition show it was signed by 590 town residents representing 162 households. And there was also a, at least one discussion thread on one of the privately run listservs available to Somerset residents that expressed uh, a, a variety of views and, and had robust discussion on the legislation. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Council President Shaw, do you have any questions or comments? Please mute, you have to unmute. I did unmute myself. I think somebody else is muting people. Um, but before I, I do have a statement, but before I um, do my statement, I do have a couple questions or one question for Steve. We talk about this as gas powered leaf blowers, but isn't the legislation written so that it would cover any gas powered blower, whether it was used for leaves or whether it was used for um, mosquitoes like Mosquito Joe or whether it was used by gutter cleaners? Yes, at the uh, suggestion of our town attorney, um, we went with the, the, the broader term of gas powered blowers in the legislation, because otherwise a landscaper blowing grass clippings could claim, well, they're blowing grass clippings and not leaves, so they're exempt from it. The key thing is the noise. We're trying to address machines that have excessive noise. Wanted to be sure people understood there was a bigger range than just the landscape companies. Okay. <clears throat> um, tonight, I want to thank Steve for introducing this important legislation and say that if all the landscape companies were the size of Shorb, who spoke at our second forum, I would support the ban in the proposed legislation of January 2022. But we have a lot of smaller landscape companies working in Somerset, many of whom are owned or managed by minorities. I want to give those smaller companies a chance to retire their equipment as it wears out and therefore support a ban of January 2023. We've often heard, let's do our legislation like DC and Chevy Chase Village. To be clear, 
DC gave their companies three years to comply with the ban and Chevy Chase Village two years. This legislation would provide less than a year. 2020 was hard on everyone and I don't want to add to the economic difficulties minority firms and their employees have been facing. At the second forum, our landscape consultant said she thought there were a couple of important things to acknowledge. First, that this comes down to a class issue about capitalism and efficiency and companies doing their jobs as fast as they can so they can make as much money as possible. And second, that a lot of the environment movement is led by a class of individuals who are highly educated and talking down to people who are actually doing the work. She added that moving away from that model can provide success. Around Somerset, I see a lot of signs supporting Black Lives Matter, and I think many homes that have those signs would also say that Brown Lives Matter. I think that giving firms, especially small minority firms, another year to comply with the proposed ban strikes a good balance. In addition, our Environment Committee has said it will do what Chevy Chase Village did and meet with homeowners and landscapers to help them better understand this issue and explore options. They said like Chevy Chase Village, they will produce a helpful bilingual brochure. With their efforts, we might expect to see changes come quickly in more quickly than 2023 and noise levels in Somerset reduced during this year. Thank you. Thank you. So you, you have no more questions, right? Oh. Okay, thank you. Council member Zoe Gazer. Um, I echo everything that you've said. I think that was truly beautifully stated. And I just wanna be clear that everyone understands that this conversation is, is not about the noise and the ban. As far as I can tell, we're, we're all on the same page on that issue. Um, but the issue that we're talking about is when the ban will start. But that's not to say that we won't work collabor collaboratively as, as a town to make sure that we're working with the landscapers and with the residents during next year with the pamphlet that uh, the Environment Committee has promised to produce and with the educational brochures that the Environmental Committee has promised to produce so that we can, we can give all that information out to all the landscapers in town, to, to all the residents in town, so that our community, instead of having reporting neighbor against neighbor, as they will be doing in DC, and as they will be doing in the town of Chevy Chase, and now I understand from Matt, that will be in the village as well, instead of putting neighbor against neighbor, we can work together, right? And not be sparring with our neighbors and, and have a much quieter town in 2022. That's what we all want. All of us are for that. But, but let's try to be a little gentler, I feel, with the small minority owned businesses. Many thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Peel. I have uh, not prepared a statement for tonight. I was more in a listening mode for tonight's um, presentation by the Environmental Committee, but I am generally speaking, I want to make it clear that all five of the council members have already said publicly that we agree with the goal of banning gas power leaf blowers. And just so everybody who's listening and on this understands, um, to the extent that we disagree, it has to do with the timing and the implementation. So um, I think those are things we can work on and come up with good solutions for. And I think the Environmental Committee has already done a tremendous job of educating the people in the town, including me, about the reasons to have a ban. And as I've already told, um, my fellow council members and Barton, I was not in favor of this over the summer. And um, thanks to the educational programs that I've watched this fall, I now am on board with the proposal. 
And my concerns have to do with, with, as I said, implementation and timing. So that's all I have for right now, but I'm interested to hear the program. Thank you, Council Member Barr. Matt, you're gonna unmute him. Okay, Thank I'm you. fine now. Thank you. Uh, I, I heard it said that um, our council president is concerned for the well-being of black and brown people. And I'm disappointed that she is not aware of the uh, health damage that gas-powered leaf blowers do to minority landscapers who are working with them, uh, who are exposed to deafening, and I mean deafening, levels of noise all day as they're working on the leaf blowers and to serious pollution that is emitted from the blowers while they're working and they are closest and most exposed. I, I also very much am concerned about the well-being of residents who uh, are affected by the noise of these blowers. So though I welcome all of the council members in support of the ban, I am disappointed that uh, some of the council members consider the economic health of the owners above the health of the actual workers who are doing the landscaping. Um, so I think that is most urgent for them. Uh, I will point out also that landscapers were called essential businesses and have not suffered unduly during 2020, unlike hospitality workers who have suffered awfully during this time. Um, I will raise one point, which is there's this widespread belief that leaving leaves on a lawn kills grass. It doesn't. Um, I have left my leaves on my back lawn for the last five years. It is completely covered with leaves from my oak tree. I have never had healthier grass. Uh, the reason why I have healthier grass is because the leaves are a sponge. They soak up water and then they dribble the water down to the grass roots slowly, which benefits the grass roots and strengthens them. Grass does very little growing at all in the winter time, so the lack of light is really irrelevant to them. And the advantage of water to them that's coming there does indeed strengthen the roots and build up the roots. So no, it is not the case that putting leaves on grass uh, kills the grass. I have proof of that over five years. I'll stop there, thanks. Thank you. Uh, now we will proceed for public testimony from residents or guests. And so, as I had mentioned earlier, for those who would like to provide testimony, uh, the town manager will call on you and then you will be allowed to speak for up to two minutes. And after that, any council member who has a question or a comment in response to the testimony should also raise their hand and the town manager will call on you. So with that, Mr. Town Manager, who is the first person that will be? Excuse me, Matt, if this is Steve, if Lucy Freeman is in the waiting list, she'd indicate to me that she had another like government function she was going to this evening. She, she was hoping to speak early, if, if she's present. She is present, so Matt, do you? Sure, yep, uh, she go ahead, Lucy. Lucy, you need to speak closer to your, we can't hear you. Hmm. Lucy, can you, uh, can you write your quick comment in the chat? Lucy, you might consider oh, hold going on, back. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, um, Lucy. Why don't you uh, call my call my cell phone, and I will. Um, I put it. Okay, let's go to the next. Let's go to the next one, Matt. Sure. Uh, 
So first up, we have uh, Jack Frank. Jack, if you're there. Yes, I just want to state that as a person on the Environment Committee, I fully support the uh, recommendation we gave the council, and I support the 2022 uh, ban. Okay, thank you. Are, do any council members wish to uh, question Jack or make a comment? Okay, thank you. Let me, I'm going to try to call Lucy right now. Hold on. Okay, let me call her um, other number. Oh, wait a minute, I think she, let me call her cell again. I think she picked it up. Jeffrey? Okay, can everybody hear? Okay, go ahead, Lucy, start your testimony. Okay, I'm sorry about this, and thank you for accommodating me. I've got a nice echo. Um, so, first of all, this was raised in, I think, in the 1990s, and George Snow raised this issue, and he did it at many meetings, saying that he, I believe, wanted to ban all leaf blowers. But in any case, it was definitely gas blowers. And then uh, this was discussed during the primary. So it has now been discussed in May in the town of Somerset. And I think that, you know, 20 plus years and a discussion since May is ample time for it to be considered to have been discussed. Se secondly, I think this issue of how to enforce it is a decision that has to be made by the town. Uh, we currently have a number of laws that are not being enforced, like parking in yellow areas and you know excessive parking at uh, construction sites and going through stop signs. And I think this is just one more issue that the town has to figure out, how are we going to enforce this? And I am strongly in favor after so many years, you know, 20, 30 years, that we now approve this to be effective in January of 22, uh, one year from now. And I would like it in the memory of the council member, George Snow, and his wife who died this past year, Lila Stepp. Okay, thank you. Hold the line, Lucy. Do, uh, do any council members wish to uh, ask a question or respond to that? Okay, thank you very much, Lucy. Talk to you later. Okay, Mr. Town Manager, who's next? So next we have Ann Bolton. Hi everybody, Ann Bolton from Cumberland Avenue. Um, first of all, I just wanna really say that I appreciate the work that the Environment Committee has put into all of this and the information that was shared with residents. Um, I know it really affected conversations I had with my landscaping company. And so I found that very effective, but, um, and I know this has been debated, debated for many, many, many years, but I think what none of us could have anticipated was um, this global pandemic and the effect that it's having on businesses. I too thought that the impact would mostly be on small minority owned businesses. I wasn't worried about my landscaping company because they seemed to me to be a larger company and I didn't think this would affect them. But when I actually talked to them and asked them, you know, what it would, would they be able to purchase uh, electric leaf blowers? They said that they, they don't have the funds to do that. And so my concern is that this could actually be more wide ranging and could result in job loss. I think everybody wants to protect the hearing and the health and safety of workers, but we don't want people to lose their jobs. We don't want companies to go out of business. And even though landscaping companies have been able to work through this, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, that they're necessarily making a ton of money or extra money that they can afford into the, uh, afford to buy new capital equipment. 
I think if the cash for clunkers applied to small businesses, that would be one thing, but I do support the ban on blowers. And I also support delaying the timing of the ban to give businesses more time to save and be able to afford the equipment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Town Manager, did anyone raise their hand for that? Uh, I have a, I have a few more residents that would like to. Okay, to who's next? Uh, David Kathan. Hi, uh, David Kathan on Dorset, and I am a member of the Environment Committee, and I'm testifying in support of the proposed legislation. I believe that it is the right thing to do. I think that the uh, gas-powered leaf blowers are harmful uh, for, uh, in terms of noise. And I uh, support the timing uh, that is, as proposed. Um, and I wanted to also address the issue of uh, the mowing on the town land. I think that uh, there is plenty of uh, experience, as Robin uh, mentioned, uh, on the use of mowers, and they do not cause negative impact if they are used correctly and the mulching is done correctly. So I would recommend that uh, we follow that policy on town parkland. Uh, so that's my testimony. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can... Mr. Town Manager, next. Um, the next person who wished to speak was Walter Ray from Ray Brothers Landscaping. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm sorry I don't have my video active, but uh, I have been following the discussion throughout the uh, not the last 20 years, but at least over the last year as uh, a business, I am uh, here to say that whether you're big or small, minority owned or otherwise, that the pandemic has impacted players, big, small, medium, and otherwise. And while we may be called essential, we feel like we are, it does not necessarily mean that we've been any more or less profitable and I don't think there's, uh, I think there's some assumption that larger firms are more profitable than smaller ones. Well, <clears throat> I've been a small firm and I've been an individual operator and I think there's different parts of how one can operate. But the point of my, um, I'd like to make is that as a company, and I will just say that I don't um, support the total ban on gas powered leaf blowers. Now, I for one deplore the leaf blowers I don't like the noise for one. I don't like the pollution for two, but I do think there's a responsible way to use the current equipment with that meets the county standard for noise. But um, I think the problems arise when there's poor training. I think John Shore of Shore Landscaping talked about that. Um, I think that um, there's a way to use a single leaf blower in conjunction with leaf rakes and tarps or mulching the the leaf material in the grass. We vacuum the leaves that people put out there. So if we can have more leaves that are left in the, the yards, that's great. But um, I'm not for an immediate ban. I think further study and further discussion is warranted. Um, I don't have, have not had the time to put together a white paper on it, but it's something that I talked to uh, the town manager about doing to kind of give a little bit different viewpoint and perspective um, from my experience. And I may want to do that further down the line here, but um, I just wanted to address those people here on the call and put in my uh, perspective. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Next, Mr. Uh, questions. Oh, okay. Um, at Walt, Walter, what percentage of the company's business is in DC and in Chevy Chase Village? I can't answer that exactly. Uh, rough is fine. Rough is fine. DC and Chevy Chase Village. Eh. Uh, let's say 20%. How are you responding to the ban? Um, well, we've had, uh, we've rolled out uh, some lower power blowers in the Chevy Chase Village uh, based on their van and um, had one crew do a uh, sample run with some, some of those. And it's been challenging to say the least. So we had some most experience with it. I haven't looked at the data in terms of 
not that it's all about time. I'm not really a data hound myself, but um, it's been a little bit challenging. Uh, and it hasn't taken effect yet in DC, if I'm correct, but it will. And I know that the village has sort of been our test case. So um, we're kind of getting used to what that's going to be like. Um, and I haven't really had a full, because we just sort of went through the first initial leaf season with it. I haven't gotten a full uh, report from everybody in the field, but um, I know it has impacted our efficiency. But I think in general, we know that's the direction things are moving. Um, we're just a little bit less, and I don't want to call anyone here knee jerk. I'm just saying that it's a study thing. It's ongoing. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager, who's next? All right, next up we have Paul uh, Baldessari. Paul, I apologize if I mispronounced your name. No, it was perfect, thank you. Uh, I actually just have a, a, a question for Walter or, or and that might well, apply. To this, tonight is the opportunity to make comments on the uh, legislation. We can get your questions answered another time, but if you could just comment on the legislation. My only concern is, is, is about if there's an increase in price. Um, I'll, I'll refrain on my comment from the legislation. I really don't have enough information to comment. I haven't followed with enough detail uh, all the discussions, so I wouldn't, uh, I'm not really prepared to comment. Um, and I'm just con just c curious if, if Walter or anybody else, any other companies would be raising prices as a result of any capital improvements they need to make to purchase this equipment. Okay, well, we will get that question answered and back to you. Sure, thank we you. Put it in the, and we will put, we will put it in the record. So thank you right. for attending. Next. Well, we made it once around the horn. So uh, Jack Frank has actually raised his question and, and has another comment that he'd like to make. Okay, well, let's make sure because uh, if there's if there's no one else that wishes to speak, this will be the uh, end of the hearing. So is there anyone else on first round? It looks like uh, we have had a, a flurry of, of hands being raised. Um, so uh, the first one I saw was uh, our Environment Committee Chair, Barton Rubenstein, Stein, excuse me. Can I, can I defer to Kumar first? If that's okay with the town manager, please. Did, uh, more than okay with me. Did he, is he on, did he wish to speak? Yes. Okay, good, yeah, ask, go to Kumar. Thank you. This is Kumar Vaswani, Trent Street. Um, I have a lot of comments on this, but I'll try to keep it short. I'll send my- You have two minutes. Okay, I'll send my comments. Anything my... else you can submit to the, you can submit. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, three main points. Uh, you talked about uh, impacts on minority owned businesses. And uh, we don't have a lot of minorities in this town, but it's well established in our healthcare that our healthcare system fails to treat minorities as well as it treats whites, even when you account for income. And I'm just wondering, in the proposal to delay the start date of this until 2023, where's the concern for minority residents of this town? In other words, when a minority resident of Somerset seeks health care for heart problems, hearing stress, or hearing loss, stress, even symptoms of COVID-19, all of which have been shown to be caused or exacerbated by gas-powered leaf blowers, statistically, that resident will not receive the same health care as our town's white residents. So that's just something to take into consideration. Second, I feel that there's a misplaced focus on enforcement. And I think that the council's emphasis should be more on compliance rather than enforcement. Most compliance with laws is achieved through public education, not enforcement actions. The county council just passed a ban on giving out straws at restaurants. They just passed a ban on releasing helium balloons outdoors. They just imposed a requirement for apartment owners to install window guards on their windows so that kids don't fall out. I would say 90% of the compliance from that is gonna be from uh, public education. And I think that provided the Environment Committee comes up with a robust program of uh, 
educating landscapers and educating residents that that's not going to be a problem. And then finally, there was something that really disturbed me in the front page article in the Somerset Town Journal. And it said that mandates aren't a popular tool. And frankly, that's something that I'm being a little facetious here, but it's something I'd expect in the Wall Street Journal, not the Town Journal. Uh, aren't all laws mandates? And it just seems to me that uh, that Somerset residents won't balk at paying a little bit of a higher price when landscapers pass the cost along to them for this. And uh, I just think that in this progressive community, uh, mandates, frankly, are popular. And uh, so I'm, I'm in favor of uh, starting this ban in 2022. The proposal to start it in 2023 was at one point portrayed as a compromise. I don't really see that as a compromise since all the council members are in favor of a ban. You know, I can see going a little bit later into 2023, a few months, but uh, I really think this needs to start in 2022. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did any council member wish to? Yeah, uh, I, th I think that, um, I think Barton had a comment and then after, okay, so, after Barton, so I think all the council members had raised their hands and expressed an interest. Okay, so uh, Barton will be next to testify, I believe, but uh, call on each council. I'll, did, you, did you say that every councilor wanted to respond? I think all the, yeah, I think it okay, maybe so will go around the horn again. With the council. So let's call on council member uh, President Shaw first. I thought we were going to call on Barton next. But this is your opportunity. Did you want to respond or ask a question to Kumar? Did any other council member wish to do that? Okay, thank you. Yes, okay, go ahead, uh, Barton, for your two minutes. Oh, hi, everybody. I just want to um, share my appreciation for this open forum. Uh, I'm really happy to hear from some of the residents tonight and some of their poignant comments. I also want to show appreciation to the council members for their support of this ban. And I realize that most of this uh, discussion is about the timing of it <clears throat> and, and when that should happen. And I guess uh, a lot of the, the points that I ha wanted to bring up have already been brought up. I think I just want to emphasize the fact that, you know, town council members are um, appointed or they're, they're elected by uh, their constituents, which are the neighbors, uh, are the residents of the town of Somerset. And therefore, you know, um, I know the petition was a very large um, display of a lot of residents in our town. And yes, there has been um, a few people, um, a handful of people that have shown reservations about the timing of it. But I think there has been a, a very large uh, gathering of residents that have shown support for this ban and that it should be uh, put in place on January 1, 2022. So I understand that there is a balance in making your decisions, but I just hope the council consider the fact that, you know, the cons their constituents have spoken very loudly. Um, and uh, I just want to show, share my appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Did, it, did it, any council member raise their hand? I don't know, not okay. specific to Okay, Martin. thank you, who's next? Uh, we had had, I think Jack had raised his hand to make a second comment. Is, is there anybody else? Uh, there were no other first. Okay, comment. okay, so this will be the last comment. Thank you, Jack. My only quick comment was we have an assumption here that leaf blowers are necessary. I think we should consider the possibility that landscapers go back to what is always done with rakes and everything else. I know in my yard, I use rakes often. So I'm not sure that leaf blowers are necessary. So over and out. Thank you. And at this point, uh, we will conclude the public hearing. I wanna thank everyone for their participation. What did you?
So there were several council members who had their hands up and were not called on uh, before uh, you finish with the resident. Well, what's the purpose of that? What would the purpose be? Did I don't? Did anybody raise their hand, Matt? Yes, I raised my hand. The the council the council I I think there was a little bit I think uh, the council had expected one more. Most of the council had raised their hand, I think, expecting to get one more okay, let's uh, do one, turn around, let's, turn around okay, the aisle one last one, Let's do one more round uh, for uh, council members to make uh, statements. Council President Shaw. Council member Zoig Hauser, did you wish to say anything before we conclude? Uh, I just want to thank the Environment Committee for all their hard work uh, on this. Um, and I also want to thank Walter Ray for being here. Um, as far as I know, he was he was uninvited. <laughs> uh, he does, I know Ray Brothers does quite a bit of work in town and and I really appreciate his willingness to participate in this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Peel. Um, Yes, I had um, wondered if we, I, I think there was one of the towns that had um, proposed banning leaf blowers for part of a year, but not all of it. And um, I just, I mean, I don't really understand the format of this meeting tonight, but I- This I is have a public a hearing. And we, if you have any question like that, uh, we, will, we will get the answer before- Okay, well, let me to... formulate my question then, I guess. My question would be, um, I guess my question would be, why wouldn't we talk about that as an option? So, since one of our neighboring towns has raised a, t um, a partial ban in their town. And I, I'd be curious to know if we could, if we could talk about that at all. But, um, Okay, I well, also, perhaps frankly, I also, I also had a question for Walter Ray, but okay, I'm not sure whether yeah. I'm allowed to answer, ask him a question. It's not the purpose of the hearing tonight. So we will All get right. your question answered and we will get it circulated. Okay, I'm, I'm it, not finding you. that I'm really learning much of anything tonight. I thought this was going to be a little bit more of a learning experience instead of just comments. Well, but... It's a public... Well, I'm sorry you didn't understand the purpose of it. It's a public hearing on the legislature. Well, I'm, I've, I'm sorry that I don't have an opportunity to ask questions. It sounds like this okay. is not the night for it. Thank you. Council member. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, weren't council members off, supposed to be offered the opportunity to question um, people who um, made statements? And I, I see that Mr. Ray is still here so that it should be possible for council member um, Peel to be able to ask him her question. Well, I wish she had, I wish she had asked it at the time, but I will you allow that. Hand. I will she allow raised, that question. I raised my hand at the time, and she I was did. not called okay, on. Okay, thank so. you, Councilmember Peel. Please ask your question to Mr. Thank Ray. you, I'm Mr. Ray. Are you available? Uh, yes, I am, Franny. Thank, Go ahead. thank you. I I was um, wondering if you could explain to us a little bit about how just how it actually works for your trucks when they go out with battery power leaf blowers. And um, we've had a report from our town manager about how it works for our town staff. And I wondered if you could give us a sense of how the, the battery power leaf blowers actually work during a given day for your crews, whether they charge the battery on a generator on your truck or whether they bring extra batteries with them. I just wondered if you could just educate us on that. Right, so um, I'd say that our experience is consistent with what was reported by the town, the group uh, that works there at the town, that uh, longevity and uh, that kind of thing is a real challenge. We don't have any onboard charging system, nor have we invested in multiple batteries to keep these things running um, for longer periods of time. We just haven't gotten that far. So I can't really give you too much more than that. Although I, I was uh, part of the discussion uh, about how the town employees at the town of Somerset use them. And our, I think our experience is consistent with that. So you, just so I understand what you're saying, you still have yet to make the capital investments in the batteries themselves and the chargers? Um, 
in a, on a full, on a wholesale way, yes, we have one crew that has tried to do that. Um, actually, it's a low noise blower, and I think some of them are electric powered, but um, we went through several manufacturers and that kind of thing and have looked at some of the costs, and they're pretty, uh, have been pretty prohibitive in terms of what you need to um, operate a blower for a long time during the fall. Now, I also concur that leaves can be dealt with in a different way and it's not mandatory to use a leaf blower. They are handy for cleaning up details and things like that, but we're trying to train our crews not to be so dependent on them and use them in a very, very limited way, like one at a time at a very low decibel level and um, no, no dual use and that kind of thing. So we're moving that way. It's just maybe a little bit more slowly than an outright ban. And how long does you think it will take before your all of your trucks have battery powered leaf blowers and chargers and extra batteries? Um, well, that's a decision. Um, it's hard to say since we haven't even made the commitment to get, we, we're looking for other options actually than doing it that way because I think there's some down downside to the electric ones as well. Um, and we hope to be a company that's not necessarily dependent on blowers at all, but that's uh, maybe discussion for another time. Um, but so I, I can't really answer you. If it's imposed, we will, you know, comply and do what we can to make it happen. Certainly, we're not going to run um, rogue and not comply with any ordinance, whether it's in the village of Chevy Chase or the town of Somerset. But I do think your point of looking at other jurisdictions that may have looking at a partial ban that that seems like. Uh, a reasonable step, and I, I don't know what the, what uh, jurisdiction that is, but um, you know, I think it's it's good to see what it might be a half step, or maybe it's even a better approach. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Sorico. Thank you very much. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention is uh, Ray Brothers. Uh, Participate in the, EC, the Environment Committee has held two very informative uh, public forums, and um, a lot of this information was presented or available. Um, and I think we can we can go back to the minutes if folks want to dig into that some more, or we can easily follow up with questions. Um, the one thing I want to follow up on was uh, Franny, your comment about um, what Kelly Okelson of Smith Initiative had said, she spoke at the second EC forum. I think uh, that was the reference you made about, um, in, in about sort of upper white environmentalists uh, seeming to be looking down on um, minorities. Um, my takeaway from what she was, and that's just my paraphrase of what I was hearing. So I apologize if I, I got that, was, that incorrect. That was Marnie's point, but I understood it at the time it was made by Kelly. Okay, well, but but I took something completely different away from what Kelly said. So we could always reach out to Kelly and find out what her intention was. I took her to mean that the issue is white people of privilege in a town like Somerset are looking for the cheapest service possible and they don't care if the gas power leaf blowers are operating at 75 decibels and are making the minorities uh, employees deaf. They don't care because they just want the cheapest service. That's what's offensive. I think that Kelly fully supports uh, putting a ban like this in place as soon as possible. So Councilor Serco, I would suggest that you get the information from Kelly so that okay. when the uh, legislation is debated in February. Uh, we'll do. We could for, uh, uh, more information available for the, for the discussion. Councilmember Barr, last but not least. Matt, can you please mute, unmute him? I unmuted myself, it's all right. Um, it's been an interesting discussion. And, and again, let me say thank all the council members because we are all in favor of banning these leaf floors, although Franny's, Franny's banning seems to be wavering a little bit. Um, Thank you, you're, it's not good. I, I wanted to follow up on what Walter was saying actually, because he's, he is absolutely on the ball here. Uh, there are many ways to manage leaves, only one of which is leaf blowers, in fact, and another of which is rakes, 
but there are other ways to do it too. And I think the Environment Committee needs to do some education on this, not only on the harms of gas powered leaf blowers, but also on the ways you can manage leaves, because in those ways, minority owned landscapers don't really need to spend money on battery powered blowers because there are other ways to do it. Um, and so with education, it can save money for minority owned landscapers, as well as educate our own residents on the ways to manage leaves. And with that thought, I'll, I'll end it. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. And I wanna thank everyone for attending this public hearing. And I would like to remind everyone there's still lots of opportunities to sit, uh, send your views on this code amendment and to ask questions. And I look forward to a very uh, robust discussion when the council considers this code amendment in February. Thank you very much, everyone. See you soon. Take care. Take care.